and activities in the Southeast Fishery Science Center, which is the main CNO of the National Fishery Service. And I uh, just want to make the point that our, our we have regional responsibility in the Southeast, which includes three large green ecosystems. Gulf of Mexico is probably one of the most important, the South Atlantic, uh, also the Caribbean ecosystem. But we also have responsibilities for the ICAP, the high, high uh, sea species of uh, migratory uh, bluefin, you know, the tunas and bluefin and billfish and things. So we have a large spatial scale of responsibility. This shows you our jurisdiction uh, and the distribution of our lab. It seems to have been moved north <laughs> somehow in the slide. But, uh, they're coastal, but you notice the emphasis is on the Gulf of Mexico for our research efforts. <laughs> I guess that's the future, yeah, the future location here. <laughs> but I also make the point that the Gulf of Mexico, the U.S. jurisdiction shares this ecosystem with other countries, mainly Mexico in this case. And we need to uh, also, a lot of our effort is to work cooperatively internationally with our uh, partners in Mexico. We have three large Themes for our research. First, to monitor and assess resource, uh, what, what the conditions are, the trends, what's happening. Second, we try to do research and uh, uh, experiments to try to understand the cause and effects, why things change, not just how they change or do they change, but why. And the third theme is to try to put this in the ecosystem context for management purposes. As scientists, we provide the science, we do not do the management provide managers the research and information to help them. Um, in terms of the ecosystem, obviously we have our physical um, uh, resource, you know, the, uh, the reefs, the geology, the chemistry, the oceanography. We have the biotic um, dimension, which is the uh, structure and function, the animals, the organisms, but also the growth, the reproduction, mortality. We also have the human dimension, which is a critical part of ecosystem-based management. People are important, not only in extractive uses in fisheries, but also the non-extractive uh, uses that uh, people rely on for the economy and tourism and things. So under ecological kind of framework, we have ecosystem structure and function. That translates directly to people in terms of goods and services. Fish are the structure of the reef system, say, for example, or the Gulf of Mexico system but also here the, the goods and providing fish and service provided by that ecosystem. And of course, restoration and understanding impacts is an important part of our ecosystem-based approach. This just shows you in our sustainable fisheries uh, segments, uh, some of the stocks, we have 60 stocks and fishery management plants in the Gulf of Mexico. You can see uh, 27 have been evaluated, eight are currently overfished. And these are the type of things we need to deal with. Going a little bit fast. Um, in terms of important activities are to assess and predict on a basic scale our fisheries. One thing about NOAA research, we have large regional um, requirements. We can't just look at the local area or state jurisdiction. We have uh, large scale interests. We also have long term interests to make sure that our data are kept, archived, and made available for uh, management purposes, which is uh, on a broad regional basis. This just shows you an example here of biomass monitoring and fish mortality for white marlin uh, over time. And I could do this for you know, another you know, 50 species probably. Uh, also, we have responsibilities for protected resources. In this case, native species under the Native Species Act. We have 21 green mammals in the Gulf, 33 bottlenose dolphin stocks, and may be increased here soon. Six sea turtles, two sawfish, three sturgeon, Johnson seagrass. And somewhere I'm missing my two corals, and that number of corals uh, that are ESA species uh, may be uh, increased here in the future. They're being currently reviewed. So these are also part of our ecosystem. Our primary research activities are to fund surveys for both fish and uh, protected species and things that aren't fish. Uh, how many are out there? Where are they? Uh, are the ones changing? We have to define stocks based on the genetics and biology. We do habitat studies to understand the relationship of habitat and fisheries. And uh, most importantly, we focus on where the human cause mortality events that affect our, our organisms. Uh, certainly, fish and deer interactions is one of our important actions to protect the species. We also can focus on local interests or a smaller scale. In this case, deep water rising shows your aerial surveys for sea turtles and animals. We have extensive uh, partnerships with our state 
agencies to do uh, stranding surveys, in this case dolphins or pilot whales, but, uh, but also sea turtles. We try to understand the health and what's affecting them. In terms of our technological research, we're looking for ways to reduce fishery interactions, both mortality and just the interaction with fishing gear. In this case, one of the you know, success stories in the past has been the turtle scooter devices, which allow turtles to escape from harm while the shrimp fishery can continue and uh, maintain their uh, production. We're using other advanced technology to try to track animals. One of the most example here is uh, pop-up satellite technology. Lower left corner, you see some uh, tag areas in the Gulf where they were fish were tagged and turned up in the North Atlantic, in this case, uh, tuna. We also have some uh, really neat uh, research on very small tags, or satellite tags for sea turtles, to understand their movements. And uh, there's a little example of some of the uh, Kim's Ridley's moving into the Gulf from our, our Mexican areas. And uh, most recently, just a couple of months ago, we we're out doing tagging on sperm whales to understand their movements, behavior, and use. We also synthesize research. Uh, Symposia are one way we do this, where we try to characterize the present state of knowledge, as a lot of activity goes on, identify the critical information gaps, chart a course, co course for future research. An uh, example is the 2007 uh, Mangroves and Fish Habitat uh, Symposium uh, publication, but also more recently, and thanks to Harvey for the logo, is the Circle Hook Symposium, understanding uh, terminal gear effects how we can uh, uh, reduce that effect on, uh, on, on fish stocks, that no effects, especially as release fishing becomes more important. Uh, some examples, we look at uh, effectiveness of regulation. This is an example from Tortugas, where we developed uh, MPAs, there are no fishing areas, trying to restore some of the stocks in the habitat. And you see in the upper uh, area, before, uh, in blue are the legal size fish. So, you know, the blue bar is fairly small, 40% the fish were illegal um, for the total population of tortoise is around 77,000 fish. After three years after no take zone in effect, you see the size structure increased radically, 43% of the size. The population increased uh, about six-fold. Uh, and so that's, again, measuring the effectiveness of management of both fishery regulations and reprotected areas. This is an example from the state of Florida where we looked at coastal protected areas throughout Florida. 60% of the Florida coast line is in some sort of marine protected area, state or federal. Uh, and they're colored in the lower right hand corner. And you can see these are three important recreational game fish black, brown, red, brown, spotted sea trout. And this is the distribution of International Game Fish Association world records in the colored dots. The black dot in the middle means it's the largest record for the state of Florida. And you can see in about 11% of the coast line, over 75% of the world records came from those small areas. It turns out they have higher levels of fishery regulation. In the case of the uh, Cape Canaveral area, um, they have a no take zone around uh, Cape Kennedy uh, in the launching area. Also, everybody's national park has both a no take zone, Joe Bay's been closed for uh, since 1980, but also they have no commercial fishing. So you can see the distribution of records in those two areas compared to the rest of the state. So this is one of our exercises to understand how these regulations work and do they work. 